have been dreaming about this second chance, so get the ready. It's a showstopper. You look incredible. We're going to see so many incredible runway looks throughout the season, but there's one look I feel like we never talk enough about, and that is your like interview looks, your confessional looks. I think that's such an important detail. We see it all season long, you know? <laughs> Jiggly, throwing it to you first, I mean, was there specific thought put into what you wear for that? And, yes. and like, what did you want it to say about you? So my interview look, I wanted to give a nod to the original reason of what my name is for. My name came from Jigglypuff and I wanted to just be this big, cute, pink ball for my interview. So I, that's why I had the pink hair, <laughs> the cute um, pink fur. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's, I just wanted to give a nod to where the or the origin of my name mm -hmm. as Jigglypuff. So that's why it's all pink. That's a fun detail. Well, and I just want to get like confused with any other Jigglies that are out there. <laughs> <laughs> what other Jigglies are there? <laughs> no, but there's like people can, can confuse it to, as Kirby. I mean, yeah. even though oh. technically that's also kind of me because I'll suck anything back. In. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Kirby. I don't mind. So You're wearing a crown. Yes, it's a subtle it's, hint, right? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm wearing wearing the crown, and actually, I where's my overalls at? Oh, <laughs> I just want to show you because you don't even get to see them um, because of the camera angle. But I did the whole like I embraced my glamour toad this time, so like on the overall, <laughs> oh. which I wish you could see, but you can't. But the reason I'm wearing okay. the crown. Hey, I'm trying to send that subliminal message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, look, look how mostly it was for function over fashion. <clears throat> I get choked up thinking about this. <laughs> so I have a shaved hairline because of my lace front wigs. My, my actual hairline is a little lower than the typical male hairline. So I shave it back and it started, and I bleach it blonde. So it started to grow out and I knew it would start to grow out over the course of the competition. So that's why I have the crown placed right over like the new growth and the roots and everything right up front. <laughs> so yes, I enjoy wearing the crown, but it's also there just to cover up my scraggly nasty roots. <laughs> These are the secrets I'm so excited to learn from you guys. I would never, I would have never known. And here we are. <laughs> well, for me with my confessional look, it's basically the colored version of my season 11 look. Hmm. So season 11, it was dark. It was black and white. She didn't see no gray, no color, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So now in All Star 6, I'm full of color, very hmm. vibrant. So it's the same vibe. It's your same home girl, but just bright, brighter. <laughs> I love the symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> Serena, I'm going to throw this to you next. What about you and your, your interview look? I mean, my interview look, it just shows, you know, a pretty chic boy, you know, the curls have to be, you know, set one specific way. <laughs> That's what I'm picky as about. And then the rest shaved so I can keep wearing wigs, but just a nice neutral shirt. And of course, like something of color to hug around it, you know, like my one red blazer. I love it so much. <laughs> color. I love color. But in a chic way. Yes. Always in a chic way. Always. Uh, Kylie? Uh, for me... Uh, you know, when people see Kylie, they see like this ultra feminine glamazon woman, <clears throat> right? But when I'm not in drag, I'm more of a tomboy. I'm more laid mm. back, more comfortable. Um, but yeah, and I and I think that's what I'm giving that is to. Uh, there's a contrast there. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, how how does a girl do drag?" Bitch, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> And Trinity, what about you? Well, I like fashion. I like to so um my confessional look was pretty basic. I mean, you know, simple black top hat, you know, turtleneck, but throughout the season, like I, as we would say, Kylie, let us wear our clothes. Okay. <laughs> can I please can I can I wear my clothes? Please? Can I please just wear my clothes? I just want to wear my clothes. Okay. But um yeah, it was just um, something simple, you know, mm -hmm. to narrate the story. That's all. I'm usually a label whore, but when you're filming something like Drag Race, they're like, uh, you can't wear like brand names. So <laughs> it was really difficult for me to find something to wear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my look was changed at the very end. Oh. Most of everything I brought in that leopard jacket that had, they gave me the glasses. Those wasn't the original glasses. Um, because the other glasses didn't make it in for the pan through the pandemic, you know, oh. traveling was 
taken, like shipping was taken extra days. I did wear a lot more makeup um, in the confessionals because looking back, like at season 11, it had got to a point where I was just like exhausted. So I just didn't care what I was wearing, but hmm. I wanted to make sure that my everyday looks match my girl looks as well. So I put a little bit more thought into those. Great. And Pandora? Well, I mean, I had a couple of choices, but one of them was like this pink flamingo. We got it when we, we were, I was doing this UK tour. I wanted something fun and campy and easy. And uh, my mistake that I thought that it would be hot, but it was <laughs> a freezer everywhere we were on set. And it, it's a t-shirt that my partner got on this UK tour that I went. And so I wore it because I thought it was kind of fun and campy. And also, so I had like a piece of him with me. And Scarlett? Uh, I wore like this white tuxedo because I am too much. <laughs> like, I don't know who let me wear that, but I did. I wore that. <laughs> and I was kind of, think I was trying to serve like, um, uh, it's like, you know, mid 1980s. And like that wedding was so much fun, but I don't know how to get home. <laughs> and I think it was a success. So yes, we'll see. We'll absolutely. See. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You remember there was one day you was walking into the, the interview room and I was like, girl, are you really wearing a tuxedo jacket? And I was like, you are so extra just like me. I live. <laughs> I know, you know, it is all stars. I mean, I, you got to dress up right. for the occasion, I guess. I don't know. I just wanted something that was really gay. Um, and I oh, wanted yeah. to wear overalls and um, earrings. And I don't know. I feel like I have a preppy vibe to me. And that's, you know, that's kind of what I was serving. Um, <laughs> not too much thought. I was like, purple, gay, done. Uh -huh. Awesome. <laughs> and Eureka? Uh, yeah, for me, I think I was just similar to Jan in a way, but it was like, I wanted to represent like who I am as a non-binary person. So I wanted mm -hmm. to like have lace and gold and a big bow tie and be dramatic. And I have clothes made for me a lot because I just can't find like stylistic clothes in my size a lot of times. So I just wanted it to be custom and fierce. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And let the kids know, honey, I might be big as hell, but I got a cute little bow tied up shirt too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Akira? Um, for me, it was just to show that I can actually dress Greg too. Because what happens a lot of times, a lot of girls get so consumed in their mm -hmm. drag sauna that they forget about their other side, I'm going to say, because, you know, not everybody identifies as male. So it was just to show that, you know, I can, I mean, I can look good, you know, on and off stage, basically. Mm -hmm. Because that's mm -hmm. also matters. Because a lot of times, you get, you have to realize, bitch, we go through airports and stuff, and it's like, they don't care. The fans don't care that it's like eight o'clock in the morning and you like just jumped off a flight. They still <laughs> want pictures. So it's like, you kind of, I try to find a ways to make sure that when I do something for a curia, I also do something for Greg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. You know, I watch the Meet the Queens religiously. I always do. But you guys talk a little bit about like why you wanted to compete again. But I think I'm kind of curious, like, why now? Why All Star 6? Um, wh why did this feel like the right time to come back? Uh, I'll throw that to you first, Jiggly. Because I was on a break on Pose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, I think that it's the right. It, I felt it felt time for me to come back. I was reaching the the decade mark of my time from being away from this franchise. So I felt like it was the right time to come back. And, and at this point, my representation is just super important. Being trans, plus size, brown, and Asian was just something that I felt like was something missing from the franchise. And I mm -hmm. wanted to be able to show that to the world. And because like, there's so many kids that watch the show and like I said, representation is really important. And if they can see somebody like themselves on television, I feel like that's important. And because when I was growing up, I didn't have anyone that was like me on television. Mm -hmm. And if somehow, some way, that visual of just me doing something fun and amazing on television for somebody to watch, and if they could take something from that, I feel like they could take a lesson from my mistakes <laughs> and make something beautiful out of it. I feel like that's <laughs> Yeah, well put, absolutely. And, and Ginger, same too. I mean, of course, we, we've seen you on All Stars before, but why, why All Stars 6? Why did you want to come back now? No, <laughs> off the record. <laughs> All Stars 2, for me, like, it's such a double-edged sword because All Stars 2 is revered as like 
the best season ever. So I'm really proud to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. But also, I was never a part of that. Mentally, I just was not in a good place. I had a lot of really bad stuff going on in my life at that time. So I didn't want to compete. I wasn't there to compete. Um, I was doing it more out of a sense of responsibility. <laughs> and now, all these years later, I have like gotten all, all my ducks in a row. I've mm -hmm. learned who I am and what makes me me and what I have to offer to the world. So I'm so excited to go back into All-Star 6. I feel like this is really my my first shot at all stars, you know, this is the legacy that I want to leave because I am fully me now. I'm a very different person. I'm a very different queen mm -hmm. and my head's in it. I'm really excited to compete now. No, I have decided all star six because all star six is where they decided to give me that phone call. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> they said, girl, you want to come? And I said, when? I'm there. What you want me to do? Uh -huh. I mean, we all feel that way, but also, you know, more than taking the opportunity, because it's not like we're going to say no, right? You have to go. I think it's also feeling prepared, like, I think mentally and emotionally to get there. It's the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And when mama calls, you answer. Hello. You go. It's just that simple. And also after yeah. sitting at the house in the middle of a pandemic with no no gigs and nothing to do, they said, uh -huh. you, want to come, you want to come and do something with your life. I said, you know what? Please give me life. <laughs> there we go. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I at a point to go back to all stars just because they ask, honey. <laughs> if people ask you for opportunity, you should at least meet them. And at that, that point in time where coronavirus, we had been sitting in the house. I had been quarantining with Vangie. We had done nothing but drink Hennessy. I said, let me ch do a change of schedule. And so going back to All Stars is what I decided to do. Now, going back was not a light decision. It was very, very hard because in past interviews, I said I never wanted to go back. But mm -hmm. you know what? I felt like my sisters around me had really uplifted me into a point to where I had the confidence that I had before I entered the drag race franchise. And going back, I just wanted to share that light of when mm -hmm. I was just so hopeful and I wanted to fight for a career. And going back, I wanted to do that again. I wanted to go back and, you know, it's not... You know, for me, winning is the bonus, but I wanted to go back and I just wanted to see the girls and just to show them that I am better than what I was before. I do have a little bit of a fashion sense, but now I have the coin and the designers that will do it for me. That brought me great joy to go mm. into that workroom and be so well received each and every time that I hit that, that runway. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm glad that I did it for those reasons. I'm glad that I get to sit here with Scarlett and Pandora because um, Scarlett is from my original season as mm -hmm. well. And then Pandora was my L.A. sister when I lived in L.A. And, you know, we get the opportunity to show you more of a sisterhood. Sisterhoods are not perfect, but they're sisterhood. They're always growing and they're always, always, always shading each other. So <laughs> I'm glad that I got to be a part of that experience with these two ladies and the rest of my cast. So I'm glad that I made that decision. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I'll throw the same question to you then, Pandora. I will say that my first All Stars experience was mm -hmm. not great. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when I knew that they were bringing Queens back, like when they brought uh, Manila and Latrice back, I thought, oh, wow, this is actually a possibility that I could come back. And then I would have said no. I just, because I just really did not mm -hmm. enjoy my experience there. But then as I kept going on, there's more and more all-stars. I was like, well, when are they going to ask me? <laughs> and they asked me very early on uh, before the pandemic, like if I want, if I was even interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, because I knew that I had to say yes, even if I was leery about doing it, because I'm like, no, just say yes, because you never know. And I kind of felt like they asked, and I don't know if they're going to ask again. And hmm. I do want that opportunity to go back. I want to go back with a better mindset. I want to go back and not uh, be in, so in, my, in my head. And I want to go back and, and prove that I'm not uh, a wretched bitch. 
<laughs> right, right, right. And then Scarlett, I'll throw it to you as well. Why, why All Star Six? Why is now the time? I have a bit of a simpler answer. I, <laughs> I had actually just gotten my tits done, and it was like yes. the perfect time uh, <laughs> for me to show them off. So I was like, why not? You know, Let's do it. Perfect. Uh, sometimes the stars just align. You're like, why not? <laughs> I think for me, it was just like with the entertainment industry, it's very much like you never know when you're going to get this opportunity again. Mm. So go out there and do it to the best of your ability. Like if they're knocking on my door, sweetie, I'm going to answer and I'm going to walk out and join them on a more personal level in terms of like my artistry. Um, I felt like I learned a lot from watching myself on season 12 from the comfort of my couch. Um, and I was ready to apply those notes to my next season whenever that came. And, and fortunately for me, it was all star and I was like, let's go, baby. And Eureka? Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, I was just excited to be doing drag uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Honestly, I I, hmm. I tried to do the virtual shows and it just didn't work for me. I'm too big for my apartment at the time. And it just wasn't giving me what I needed to like feel my judge and like get that entertainment um, out of myself. You know what I mean? Like it's my therapy to perform. I talk about this a lot, but also like the fact that like when it just feels right, it's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I had wanted to go back to all stars at some point when I felt like I was complete as a person. And, you know, uh, after losing my mom and things like that, I really found some self discovery even through the pandemic. So it just felt like I was ready to like go in head first, like, and be myself and have fun with mm -hmm. it and, you know, just show out, you know, why not um, support my girls, be there with the girls. It actually turned out to be an incredible experience uh, with a great cast. So I'm just blessed to be here, honestly. Oh, yeah. Such a fun cast. Um, Akiri, I'll throw the same question to you. Um, basically, also pretty much what Eureka said, but being that the pandemic made me realize not to take anything for granted. I was coming off season 11. I was on a high. I was traveling the world and everything just instantly stopped. It kind of messed with my head a little bit. So it was like when I got the call for All Star 6, it was like, oh my God, like this could be the start of something new. And also just an opportunity because at this point it made you think like, what could be here five years from now? What could be taking place 10 years from now? So if the opportunity is now, you might as well want to, you might want to take it now. And so I was just excited to be back in drag. If we look at Drag Race as a franchise, I mean, it is truly global. There are multiple seasons popping up all over. I mean, gosh, since last year, we've had Canada, we've had Down Under, we've had Holland, we've got Espana on now. It's truly remarkable. I wondered if there's anything that you guys, if, if, if you've been watching along, that you would say that maybe you've learned from any of the international seasons. And also, I mean, who, who have you, like, who's really stood out to you as a competitor from those seasons? I'll, I'll throw this again to you first, Jiggly. For me, it would have to be in the UK, watching... Bimini. It was just so beautiful to watch somebody who is also of the trans umbrella to compete and be so revered and just such an amazing talent. And I love that also she's short because us short girls never get enough play <laughs> on Drag Race. Like we always get like pushed to the side. So I love that she's one of the shorties and she's so amazing. I just loved watching her. She was so funny, so talented and definitely somebody to look out for. And she's also a fashion mm -hmm. queen. So yeah. Oh. Absolutely. And Ginger? I'm going to say that my favorite has been Canada's Drag Race, just because, not for like the judging aspect or whatever, but because those girls were so fearless going mm -hmm. into it. You could tell they had nothing to lose. They didn't give a shit. They were just there to do drag, show what they had to offer and have a good time. And I loved that cast from top to bottom. I loved them all. But I've really been intrigued like Jiggly with with Drag Race UK, particularly season two, it was really nice to see Lawrence, who um, used to open for me on my mm -hmm. my European tours. So we've known each other for a couple of wow. years. It was nice to see her get that moment, and then to win and to be that representation for girls like me and girls like Jiggly, who are you know of the big bone nature. And it was really exciting to see a plus size girl snatch the crown and I really want to do that I want to mirror that and do that here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. so we can like join forces and rule the world. Come uh, girls unite! Should... Yeah. <laughs> For me I wish I lived in the UK because I love how they all walked in and said oh, I'm a slag I'm the... and I'm like oh, yeah, <laughs> UK, 
<laughs> I just I, I think Thailand doesn't get the recognition it deserves. I think mm -hmm. we we have like all these new ones. Sure, we have UK, we have Down Under, we have uh, you know Holland and all these other franchises coming. But I, I think Thailand's been around, you know, and mm -hmm. people and these girls serve these incredible looks. Amazing, and I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I love Thailand is, is something that stands out to me. Wow. It's a lot. It's a lot to have a, a franchise in every single part of the world. I get it. Sometimes it's overwhelming for the fans and for the queens too. But mm -hmm. I think what's more important to focus on is like, these are queer individuals globally who are mm -hmm. being recognized or being highlighted, you know, and that should be the goal is that, you know, right. we should be taking over the world. The world wants Drag Race. The feeling was obviously mutual. You know? <laughs> well, let's, just remember, let's just remember in season two, you couldn't order a wig anywhere. Like you couldn't be like, oh, I'd like that style wig. I'd like that. Mm. In I'd like that. Uh, hell no. I had to make everything myself and style my myself and do everything. Oh. A whole industry has grown from Drag Race. And now it's just like, mm. go online and be like, I'd like this. <laughs> it's so you easy, know, right? <laughs> Like your season is my favorite season because of that. Like I think the drag, like drag within itself, was a little bit more authentic, and that's why I, I our love season was your favorite season. So, <laughs> oh, ours no, our season is the best season, but uh, our, my yeah. favorite season. Oh, right, important. Yeah, we the best season, right, but season two is my favorite to watch because you know, even to the craziest, you know, things that happen on that season that girls wouldn't dare do now. Like, for example, when Tatiana said, I don't think y'all saying that Tyrus could be bitch. Thank you. People wait until they get to un untuck, to un unleash. Say what you got to say in front of these judges. Be honest, you know? And that's what I was kind of doing. They told me I was a bitch, so I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Cameron, I know your time is up, but we're not going to let you leave. I'm right? so happy this has been so <laughs> But, you know, Tom, I do you have I never wanted to hold back anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say um, something. I just waited and Tatiana said it. So I was like, okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tati. Oh my goodness, you did say that. You said, well, you can be a bitch. I said, what? <laughs> did you say like, yeah, you can be un inconsiderate at times? Did well, you say I, that? There was there was more that never was shown, but yes, there was there, yeah, I, I spoke up to it. <laughs> It was a lie. You, was no, a but, lie. but you get what I'm saying? The girls don't say do that on the runway no more. You know what? They're just honest. Yeah. They wait to get to untuck and get a cocktail. And first of all, how did we end up talking about this? Because we were talking about <laughs> international drag. I don't Sorry. Know. I love it. it. This is the perfect oh, tease for the season. I <laughs> you know, watching Canada and seeing my sister Lemon just mm -hmm. unabashedly like be herself and do her thing was really awesome to me. Lemon has been doing drag for like, I don't even think three years and made it very far in the competition, did very, very, very well. Yeah. And um, to see her just kind of go in there and be like, this is what I have to offer. This is me. Love it or leave it was so refreshing for me to see, especially after my season where I feel like, oh, oh, I have so much, so many more sides to show of myself. And when, you know, her season was airing, we were leaving for All Stars. And I was just like, I'm going to take that energy and I'm going to apply it to myself and remember, you know, that she told me before she told me before I left for season 12 be yourself and don't be too nice and so I was like <laughs> noted <that>. noted <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and, and you yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> and Eureka how about you for the international seasons um I mean honestly I was really like I kind of fell in love with Holland's drag race I mm. thought it was really like heartwarming and Competitive. It was really interesting too because I didn't know the language, so I also had to read the subtitles too. It was kind of you know, it was just an interesting season to watch. I love all of the branches that were um, moving into Canada and Australia and UK, and it's just fun to see. Like I love getting to see drag all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, drag is all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Yeah>. a phenomenon. <laughs> a little plug for Republic. It's just a testament <laughs> to show like how important drag really is everywhere. And it's just drag is important because it just shows up and it's a statement piece for communities to realize like you're not alone. This is a community of people that come together to at least watch this show. It's where you can intermingle with each other. It's just the heart of our community. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's at the end of the day, you can go to a drag show and you can hang out with your Judy's and you can feel better regardless what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. what 
drag race being represented all across the world really means the most. So it's like, maybe we can't go to the bar, but at least we can set in our small groups, even during the pandemic and watch it on TV and Kiki and have our, you know, group chats where we talk about it. It's just creating queer content that we all get to watch and we need it so desperately in the world. It's just an honor to be a part of such a, like, honestly, a combusting uh, franchise <laughs> that's yeah. like leading our queer community. It's just an honor. And Akira? I'm going to have to say the UK girls, like mm -hmm. the way those ladies bring it to the runway, okay. really push the doll to, to like dig deep in herself and be like, okay, girl, like these girls <laughs> are like coming with it. Like from the hair to the looks, like they actually make, like they put, they honestly put a little fire under my butt. It was like, girl, going to All-Star 6, it's like, bitch, I got to be able to compete with them just in case it's ever something where I have to compete against them. Yeah.